Hey, Chris. How are you feeling about the Earthquake app so far? You know, pretty good. You know, we covered a lot last lesson, and the app's looking pretty slick. It does look very slick. However, we only pretended that we got a list of the earthquakes from the USGS. Yeah, true. We just copy and pasted the data that we got from the web browser and hard coded it as a string into our app. Right. In this lesson, lesson two, we're going to learn about networking, which is an exchange of information that happens between computers over the internet. Yeah, this is a powerful concept because you'll be able to request data from anywhere on the internet and display it on your phone. Networking is a fairly advanced topic, so if it sounds a little scary, don't worry. There are semester-long college courses that cover only this subject. The main goal here is that you'll have more questions about how these things work. Yeah, and we don't want you to get overwhelmed with all the details. So we're going to provide you with just enough information at just the right time, so you'll understand the high-level process and how to write the Android code to make it happen. Dude, we should tell them about the Tsunami app. Yeah, we totally should. Well, it helps to work with a working version of networking code before you write it yourself. So in this lesson, we're going to be using a sample app called the Tsunami app. The Tsunami app uses the same USGS API as the Quake Report app, but with a slightly different use case, showing whether or not a particular tsunami alert was issued for a particular earthquake. In this lesson, you'll practice reading and understanding how the Tsunami app makes an HTTP request to the USGS service and receives a response back. Yeah, so just to be clear, the Tsunami app is meant to prepare you so you can write the networking code on your own in the Quake Report app in Lesson 3. This is going to be good. Let's get started.